Hello everybody, welcome back to another video on my channel. Just come out to Dubai because there's no game this weekend. We lost in the first round of the FA Cup, which means we've got a free weekend. However, I'm still preparing for Portsmouth. We've got them next Sunday, massive game. It's actually on TV on Sky Sports. If anyone wants to follow the game, to watch me play for the first time maybe. Today on the cards while I'm out, I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about my nutrition. I'm gonna do a bit of training. I think I've got a session with a Man United player. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to record it or not. And we're just gonna chill out, recharge, watch a little bit of the World Cup, go back feeling fresh. Let's get into this one. In my element, on to Peterborough, my old team. Do I have to use a fork? Yeah, always. One of my favorite things to do when I'm on holiday is to rate iced coffees. I'm at the Burj today, Sal Beach Club. The one at the Mandarin Oriental, probably the best I've ever had. They used to hit differently. This one comes on the side. Pour. All right, we'll go. 7.7. .7. Very good. Oh no. That thing up there, flipping Drogon from Game of Thrones. Someone's let it off his leash. A falcon just flying around the beach club in the Burj Al Arab. Lily's terrified, about to take off. Hopefully it lands right here. To be fair, I'm actually scared of birds. There's one, only thing I'm scared of is birds. Turkeys. Hate their, yeah, turkey. Turkey. turkeys, more, to be more specific. <laughs> right, okay, what the hell would you do? Oh, you look brown now. So, what the hell would you do if it actually came over here? You'd absolutely shut your pants. I would, I would be off. Exactly. New top so, speed. <laughs> so what? What is wrong with you? Just order some food. Now's probably a good time for me to actually talk to you about how I've changed up my diet recently. I've got a bit of spare time out in Dubai and I've really, really changed it over this last year. It's kind of taken me 12 years to really refine my diet, get to the bottom of it, seen loads of different nutritionists and dietitians, and I finally found the optimal formula that kind of works best for me. Thank you, my friend. So this, of course, is actually part of my diet. I've got a lobster roll here with a bit of salad on the side. I'm on holiday, a little cheat meal. Why not? Not too unhealthy anyway, either, really, to be honest. Lily's got a gluten-free pasta. She's celiac, if you didn't know already, so... She's got a um, really serious allergy, actually. We don't have anything that has gluten in it in the house. Gluten's not actually the best for you, so I've kind of cut that out recently. Noticed some real good improvements, especially when it comes to, like, my gut and digestive system. I noticed that if I do have gluten now, I'm very gassy, feel bloated and stuff, so it's beneficial for me as well. But anyway, onto what I'm actually eating and what I've cut out and what I've started introducing more of. I'll leave a little list here, right? And I've kind of moved away from feeling optimally energized at all times to a more anti-inflammatory diet, which has helped me recover a lot quicker, train and play at my peak, less aches and pains in my joints, and just in general, all round better health and less inflammation and of course the less inflamed you are the less stiff you feel the quicker you're able to recover go again train and get more and more gains don't get me wrong there's still a lot of foods that i'm having that i was having before you know pre-match meal sea bass wild rice if it's the night before i'm still having vegetables leafy vegetables don't have any bulky veg slow down the rate at which carbohydrates are absorbed so try and avoid them and if you've seen my last videos, you'll pretty much have a good understanding of how I do like to eat, but it does show the kind of foods that I'm cutting out, trying to stay away from, and the, uh, the foods that I've really tried to introduce more of into my diet that I wasn't having so much of before. And since I've been on it, do you know what? I'll show you the stats from my whoop. My recovery has just been like this. It's been on a constant rise. My HRV's improved. My rest and heart rate has, uh, has gone down. My respiratory rate has gone down. So. It's clearly working and I actually feel better than ever. Talking of Whoop by the way, has anyone seen the GOAT Cristiano Ronaldo has jumped on Whoop? He must have seen a few of these videos, eh Lily? Can't talk, she's enjoying her pasta too much clearly. Saying all that, this gluten tastes tremendous. I hate you. <laughs> so I'm gonna do a session today after I've eaten this fruit. It's actually just me and Donny van der Beek. I'm not too sure if I can record it. It'll be interesting though, to train with a Man United player. Later tonight, Argentina, Mexico. Messi better turn up. They need to win. Well, they can't lose because they're out of the World Cup and then we'll, know, we'll never find out who actually goes down as the greatest of all time. We all want to see Portugal-Argentina final, don't we? So hopefully 
Messi turns up. What? Pure luxury. Lovely for a little winter break, eh? Actually worked out. I don't want to say worked out quite nicely that we lost the first round of the FA Cup. Obviously, we've not got a game this weekend. That's why, because it is FA Cup. But it just means get a chance to recharge, regenerate, do a bit of training. Warm weather training, by the way. Brilliant for the body. Go back feeling super fresh. Just trains, tough session to be fair. Ideally out here, you do want to try and get a few sessions under your belt so you start to acclimatize to the weather and you go back, it becomes a lot easier. Wasn't able to film the session either, which is a bit of a blow. You can imagine if I uh, had Donny van der Beek on my channel, I'd be getting a bill from his agent for 10 grand for image rights or something, that would be mad. Can't come to Dubai without getting a trim off my main man, Jay Fade at Beats and Cuts. Quick little tidy up, I reckon, and then another session later. <laughs> Set up for the day. Little trim. Do you know what? Finding a good barber who's able to trim well is one of the trickiest things in life. This guy over here. Although it doesn't look the best now because of the way he just chucked in some wax and off I went. But honestly, ooh, can't get much better than him. The Filipino guy, mad technique. I like to compare it to physios. You know when you go for like a bit of hands-on work, a massage, you know, you'll get like the basic level barbers that just can't really fade and aren't the best with the scissors. You go to see a, a physio and they'll just give you like a very touchy feely rub, not deep at all, doesn't really do much. And then you've sort of got the next level up from that. Physios are able to manipulate your body well, get into the right areas, work on the surrounding muscles and you've got the barber that can fade, do a good beard and trim on top. Got the full shebang, he's one of them. Great to see you Lily. See you Lily. It's not great to see you Ryan and Lily, just great to see you Lily. Maybe if my subscriber count jumps up to your Instagram and TikTok numbers, <laughs> I've got a chance, eh? Do you have to use a fork? Yeah, always. <laughs> Speaking of fruit, the actual times to have fruit in your diet as a footballer, um, or do you know what, just as a general sportsman, all throughout the week, of course, I like to have fruit as a dessert after a meal, ensure strong immune function, full of antioxidants, vitamins, all the good stuff. And when it comes to actually using it to optimize and fuel performance, night before the game, the, uh, the seven o'clock meal, don't have any fruit then. Wake up in the morning, berries such as blueberries, raspberries, banana, uh, more specifically, morning of the game, and then the pre-match meal, no more fruit. And you've probably seen me do this before, start loading up on uh, beetroot, get the nitrates around the body. You know, you can opt for beetroot juices or just go for the out and out vegetable itself. That'll work really well. And then post game, cram, really ramp up, the amount of fruit that you're intaking, especially the berries again, so blueberries and raspberries, because it's just gonna help you recover quicker, get rid of any inflammation, and it's obviously full of antioxidants. And even cherries as well, really good. And you can actually even get out and out cherry juice, you know, if you just want that big hit of cherry in your system, works really well as well. They just keep bringing us more and more food. Lily's got free alcohol, shame I don't drink, eh? I'm on the waters, she's half steaming. All the sushi's gluten-free. Bit dead, no tempura in any of them. But, it's healthier, so I'll take it. <laughs> in my element, a gym by our pool. Just seen Mike first doing a little bit out here. I don't know if you know him, follow him on YouTube. I think he only lives next door, which is unbelievable. Gonna do a little bit anyway, get a pump on, a bit of upper body while I'm chilling in the sun, getting a tan. What more can you ask for? That is what you call proper beach weights. I love it though. This is the view from the room. And that big wheel lights up and updates us every time someone scores in the World Cup. Just saw it come up then. Goal, I don't know who it was, but how cool. Time absolutely flies by. Nearly at the end of the holiday already. Doing my last session while I'm out here. 
I feel absolutely knackered. But it's a good thing because my flight tonight is actually 3 a.m. in the morning. So I want to sleep on it and be ready for training. Save the hardest session till last. Then I'm going to get through this one. So I've had this really annoying and like stubborn, I don't call it an injury, but just an issue that's been ongoing for over about two years now. Basically what it is, is patellofemoral pain in my knees. It's just some achiness walking downstairs, you know, getting in and out of a chair. So it takes me a while to get warm in the mornings. It's not like an old age thing or like, it's not like a cartilage degeneration thing or anything like that. It's just the way that my knee is currently functioning. I have to do a lot of work on my biomechanics and kind of reset everything from where I've maybe been aggravating them, doing movements in the wrong way for quite some time. So I'm so jealous. You know when you see people just rock up at training last minute, get out on the pitch, and they're able to run around and kick balls pain-free. I'm just like, how are you doing that, mate? Do you not have to warm up and activate? So at the start of every session, I always do a little bit of activation. And this is a this is like a really good one for anyone who does, does struggle with knee pain. Maybe something you want to implement into your routines. Your heel closer to your bum, so you're basically flexing and extending your quad. Next thing to do after that, start swishing on your core. You do see all these fancy core exercises, right? But one I really like to do, get on your back, flat down, get your two fingers here, and just find the top of your pelvis. So I'm on it there, yeah? If I just let my leg go out, I can feel my, my fingers have moved because my pelvis has moved. What you want to do is engage your core, tuck under a little bit, keep your back flat against the, not overly flat against the mat, but just try and find that neutral spine, get your fingers planted, almost suck your belly button down towards the mat as well. Things on the pelvis, embrace, let one leg lower out, other leg lower out. It looks so easy but it's actually quite hard to maintain the neutral spine, core engaged, pelvis, pelvic alignment is actually quite tricky. This will massively, massively reduce the risk of injuries. And it's so simple, you know, you've not got to go and start doing hanging leg raises and human flags against the pole and whatnot. The basics sometimes, taking it back a little bit is actually key. Remember as well, this isn't actually for patella tendinopathy or tendonitis. I know a lot of people struggle with tendonitis. I've had it before. You know, just sitting down in the car, your knee starts screaming, driving too long, in a cinema, whatever it might be. That's an awkward one where you've got to kind of load through the joint even more, but this is just more anterior knee pain. So anyone who gets problems, like I said, when your knees come over your toes, which is what you do pretty much all the time on a football pitch, change your directions, decelerating, jumping. This is really good for that. You've got your quad isometric holds. You can do double legs, or you can even take it to a single leg hold, swap between each legs. That will get a little burn on. Full body weight squats. You can use a little incline board or a decline board just to help with that increased range of motion. Get full lunges. You can use a pole for assistance. You can do them with dumbbells if your forms are good. Remember the principles. And that actually takes me into the grueling part of my session quads firing like CR7s right now onto the treadmill. So many people ask me all the time, right, what's the best way to improve at football? How to become a professional footballer? What do I do? What have you got to do to get to the top, make it in the game? And obviously there's so many different elements and aspects to becoming a professional footballer. One thing for me, I've always noticed, I hate, to, I hate to admit it because it's the worst thing to do. My best performances a lot of the time have come when I've been at my most fit. And I, no one likes to admit it because it's the worst thing to do. Who wants to go outside and run? I'm doing a, uh, I'm doing a session on here now. It's actually from a stamina program that I released before. Um, and that's why I released it because stamina is just a key part of football. Such a big element in the, uh, in the game. And you look nowadays how much distance players are covering. Not only just out and out distance, but high speed running, sprint distance, accelerations, decelerations. And 
People think, you know what, look, I can last 90 minutes, get through a game, it's easy for me. It's not that. It's not lasting a whole game. It's being able to maintain the same levels of technique at the end of a game as you would at the start of the game. The same goes with decision making, making them good decisions late on in the game when you're mentally tired, physically tired. Are you still able to make the right pass? Should you shoot? Should you take someone on? Should you get tight? Whatever it might be, all these things, they come into consideration when you're mentally tired and physically tired. You don't realize it, but it's actually really hard to perform optimally. And this could be a minute three, minute four, minute five of the game. If you're asked to close someone down, decelerate, turn, do a high speed run, get up the pitch for a clearance, all in quick succession. You're gonna be feeling fatigued, but the fitter players, the stronger players, the players that play right at the top level, it's no coincidence that they're the most fit. So, it's been one of my most dreaded and hated sessions, but gotta get it done. I'll leave a link to the stamina program down below if anyone does wanna improve on their fitness levels. Low. Do you know what? My heart rate was, was rubbish today. 175, 176 max. I wasn't even there for that long, really. To be fair, I haven't just realized this. I've known this for quite a while. Running on the treadmill, it's so much easier than running outside. Firstly, gradient is not the same. So if you do it on the treadmill, you've got to put the gradient up to at least 1%. Well, 1%. When you're running outside, because you're not restricted by a certain speed, so you get on the treadmill, you set it to 17 kilometers per hour, let's just say. Outside, if you're blowing, you can slow down a little bit and then you're able to speed back up and then you might slow down again, speed back up. On a treadmill, if you can't keep up with the speed, you're jumping off, aren't you? It's too hard, it's too much energy, whatnot, to actually flick down the speed, get it to the appropriate speed, imitate what you do outside, get it back up again. It is very limited in that way and also it's not as good for your joints. Get outside if you can, it's only because it's eight o'clock at night here now, it's pitch black, nowhere to run really, so did a little bit on the treadmill, but disappointed with my heart rate overall, to be honest. Would have liked to have got into the 180s, but it's all right. Probably would have pushed out a few more reps. The Lily's belling off my phone, it's our last night. Got a reservation at Namos in an hour. I'm gonna check out 10 minutes ago, so I'm in big trouble. Back in miserable old England and it's game day. Having my pre-match. Like I said, I've changed up my diet drastically since I released a nutrition video ages ago. All these different nutritionists, specialists, dietitians out there, they all have their different theories and opinions on what works best for the body, what you should eat, what you shouldn't eat. And like I said, what I was eating before, carbohydrates wise, very high in glycemic index. So from a Thursday, I'll start eating things like um, white rices, bagels, try and get my blood sugar levels as high as possible, maintain them until game day. However, the most recent nutritionist I saw, top guy, very, very respected in his field, was saying to me that, look, the higher the glycemic index of the foods you're eating, yeah, you may feel energized going to games, um, you'll have a big crash afterwards, and also it leads to more inflammation. Now, getting to the age where I need to control inflammation as much as possible, so I'm able to recover as quickly as possible. I swapped the white rice for just an organic, whole grain brown rice, cut up the bagels and the, uh, the white rices, and it's working well for me. After games, I'm less stiff. I don't feel as energized going to games, but I still feel good enough. So you gotta try and find that balance that it's taken me, what, 14 years of playing professionally to really refine and hone my diet, and I'll probably make changes again in six months time, who knows? But this is working well for me, I feel good. So right now, on the plate, sea bass, salty fish, good for cramp. You don't wanna have red meat, definitely not absorbed water. Something you wanna avoid, high in fat as well. You can pretty much go for any white fish. Sea bass, cod, halibut. Don't go for anything fatty, like I said. The carbohydrates, brown rice, like I mentioned, and that's all that's on my plate. For this meal here, well, it's 11.35 now. Try and eat three and a half hours before a game, three hours, 20 minutes, whatever it may be. No vegetables, no fruits, and no fat, because they'll all slow down the rate at which carbohydrates are absorbed. And you wanna go into the game feeling feeling as energized as possible, don't you? Bit of Himalayan pink salt here. Go for this as opposed to normal table salt. Better for the body, more alkaline. And I've got some hot sauce, because it's also good for crab. If you haven't started loaded up on electrolytes the night before, which I normally do, now's the time. I've just got a donut water, it's basically 10 times stronger than the typical electrolytes that you'll find from the supermarket or whatever, really, really good, magnesium, potassium, sodium. And that is it. Gonna eat this, get changed, head to the stadium. It's against my old manager's massive game. We need to win. I've got a good feeling about this. All the preparation work's done. See you after the game. Make sure we get the lockout right.
as well, yeah? Every time we go forward, we just push on. Oh! I'm tight on this one when we're locking down. Oh, good! Step off! George, here! Stay up! Joshy left! Oh, you Jack! Toes Jack! Oi, George, here! Max, you drop maybe. Max, if you drop, I'll give it you. Or you wanna just do it? Alfie might be on. Alfie's on. Alf, come on then. Max, wait! George! Jordy! George! George, here! Yeah. Come on. Come on, Alfie. Hey! Hey, come on. George, remember, as soon as he goes that side, he's trying to get all over here. Back there! Well done. Alf, left! Left, Alf! Hello, no! He's their, he's their threat, bro. Yeah. He's their best player. Yeah. Jack! Elf! Stay up! Give it a rest! Hey! Wait! Come on, man. Go, switch on. No way. Relax, relax. Ref. It's not a foul. I didn't even touch him. Leave it. Well done. Messi. Hey, keep this going, Josh. Good off. Wingy, well done, Wingy. Alfie left, George. Just be narrow. Josh is going to get done. In my mind goes, in my mind goes feet. Howley's on to him. Get here. Time! Time! Get out, get out. Ah. Jack! Jack, you come Jack! Jack, you come in then! Jordy up! You're round, Jordy! Find a way, 
Reach the gas pedal. Reach the gas pedal. Dude, we're getting stretched. Out. bro Oh, 
<laughs> what is going on guys? It's been a while. Christmas period has been crazy. You know what it's like being a footballer over Christmas time, no time off, congested fixture schedule. It is manic. But from the last game in this very intense fixture schedule, shall I say, Peterborough away, my old club. I'll touch on that in a little bit because that was the craziest game I've played in this season. Unbelievable. So anyway, yeah, over Christmas, I felt really ill. Just before the Ipswich game, had to miss that one. The boys did the job though, one of the biggest teams in our league, one one nil. It came back in for Bristol Rovers at home. And by the way, Portsmouth, that win there, Pompey at home, clean sheet. That's my 10th clean sheet in a row at home. Proud of that one. So yeah, going into Bristol Rovers at home on Boxing Day, did everything right over the Christmas period. Really was trying to get fit and healthy again after the illness I had. Went for a little jog Christmas day, you know how it is. And played pretty well, 1-2-1. They scored an offside goal to, uh, to end my run of consecutive clean sheets at home. Disappointing, but we got the three points. That was all that mattered. Oh yeah, we actually had Lincoln away as well. I forgot about that one. I was in between Portsmouth and Bristol Rovers. Um, so many games, kind of lost track. Drew 0-0, neither side could, um, could find a goal. We weren't the best, they weren't the best. Bit of a boring game, to be honest. And then Plymouth away and the gaffer, he wanted to change up a lot of the team for this game because we had games in quick succession and historically we've not done too well over the Christmas period. So he wanted to freshen things up, made nine changes. I played the game, we ended up losing 1-0. Wasn't the best. They're actually flying this season in the automatic spots. I think if we did have our strongest 11, I think we would have beaten them. And then on to Peterborough, my old team. London Road, I was there for three years. The manager Grant McCann and the assistant Cliff Byrne, know them very well, had them at Hull, had Grant McCann at Peterborough as well, um, signed me twice. So I was right up for this game, needed to win, wanted to win so badly. And I've been causing all sorts of commotion on Twitter and I don't mind it. Scored a goal to make it 2-0 to us, header, from a corner, it's about time I scored. And then at 3-0, unnecessarily, I don't even know why I did, I don't know what came over me. Johnson Clark Harris, their big center forwards, pulled one back across the, uh, pretty much like across the goal line. And I've gone to intercept it with the outside of my left foot. My momentum's taking me into the goal, so the ball has kind of come with me. I thought it had crossed the line. So I, well, do you know what? I don't even wanna, I don't even wanna talk about it. I'm gonna let you watch it and um, come to your own conclusions. Am I a cheat? Everyone has been calling me a dirty cheat on Twitter, it's so funny. But look, we won another clean sheet. Three points in the bag against one of our promotion rivals. Big win against my old club. Couldn't ask for much more of this Christmas period, to be fair. We are the informed side in the league at the minute. To start off 2023, made team of the week. Start as you mean to go on, eh? Another huge game against one of our promotion rivals. They're flying high in the league this season. If you've not subscribed to the channel already, click the red button down below. It's not hard, is it? Leave a little like, comment down below. If this video gets 2,000 likes, I'll release a matchday vlog for Sheffield Wednesday. And I'll see you then, guys, in a bit. And Happy New Year.